let's try something a little bit different. So we're back to almost where we started, a basic rise and fall triangle wave, and it's only varying a tiny little bit, speeding up and slowing down a tiny little bit. And this is because I've taken our two LFOs and I've patched them into a dual dope fur polarizer. And really I've got it set up, so I'm using it like two VCAs that'll pass control voltages. And now what I'm doing is I'm using the joystick to control the amount of the LFOs that we're sending to our rise and fall of maths, which is of course our basic Krell function. So this time, the difference is that instead of speeding the controlling or modulating LFOs up or down, I'm altering the amount that I am making changes to the maths envelope. And we can see as I start to move the joystick, so that both LFOs are increasing their modulation of mass, we'll start to see our basic Krell patch coming back to where it was when we left it. So both rise and fall are being modulated. Now I've increased our level of modulation a little bit so that if I crank the joystick all the way over into the corner, now both the rise and the fall are being controlled quite a bit more by the LFO. So when both LFOs are high, that's when we hear it almost running at audio rate. And you can push it right up into audio rate if you so wish, which is an amazing transformation and something that we'll explore some more. But if we back off a little bit, now what we've got is a two-dimensional control over how much the rise or how much the fall is being modulated. And again, this could be something that you could sequence as part of a more complex patch. So here you can see I'm altering the fall more than I am altering the rise. So the rise is staying fairly steady. There's a little bit of modulation leaking through, but generally it's staying fairly steady while the fall is stretching out. And you can literally see the LFO drawing its own wave shape onto the voltage that's coming out of math. And then if I head into the other corner, I should get the opposite effect, and I do. So now my rise is being modulated quite a bit, speeding up and slowing down and giving me some of those nice Krella shapes. But the fall is generally staying consistent. It's not varying as much. So I might spend, you know, Sunday morning exploring all kinds of different ways of doing this. And then thinking about all sorts of different control inputs that I could use to control something like this, to control these parameters. And this is why it's so important in modular that you have a lot of utilities at hand and a lot of controllers so that you're not just shoveling voltages all over the place, but you're in control over how far those voltages are changing, how fast they're changing, and into what direction. So for those of you that might be starting out that stumbled into this video, um, what I really encourage is that you get your hands on something. It doesn't have to be expensive. Most of the good manufacturers make them, but some kind of offset attenuating mixer. There's lots of them available. 
This little dope for 138C polarizing mixer is an example of something like that. Um, the Intelligel Triad series does that. I've also got a 4MS. It's um, shifting, inverting signal mingler and that's what's over here and I really like that one as it's got four channels gives you both offset inverting and attenuation so we've seen a few different ways that we can alter a basic curl patch to get some useful voltages and to, to make changes to what those voltages are. And of course it's an ever-ending loop. We can make changes to the way that, and the amount that we're making changes. Nesting our Krell inside of other voltage producing functions. And essentially this is my theory of building up bigger generative patches, is that you nest them into larger and larger functions that take longer and longer to produce and change voltages so that the resulting piece of work that you're creating, your audio landscape, is stretched out and changing along with those changing voltages. It was the brilliant Todd Barton who would often say in some of his older videos, remember, and I quote, remember you are only as expressive as your voltages. And so that's what, what we're doing here, is we're looking at ways to create expressive voltages and then to use them to control sounds. So I really encourage everybody to do some of this kind of exploration. And if you're stuck in a patching slump, this is a good way to fiddle around and break that kind of, um, you know, those slow periods where you feel like you haven't got any good ideas. Just fiddling around and letting the modular, letting the equipment do some of the work for you while you push it around a little bit can help to get you thinking about new, fun, creative ways. Now there's an interesting aspect to these Krell patches and to this kind of patching in general. And you really see it by keeping your eyeballs on the scope. So here I'm going to slow it down a little bit. You notice that regardless of how quickly our function runs or how slow it runs and regardless of whether or not the the rise portion or the fall portion is fast squiggly or slow the one true thing the one constant is that because of the way that maths is designed and because it's a function generator that's going to follow a rise and a fall no matter what or no matter how wiggly that is it always reaches its top voltage before turning around and heading down and I was interested in my early days of working with curl patches. I became very interested in that and I started to wonder about what kinds of musics could I create if I found ways to create curl patches that didn't have that limitation, that had ways of modulating how high that signal gets. And next up, we're going to take a look at some of the ways that I've looked at um, solving that problem and what sorts of outputs we get from it. Okay, thanks so much. I hope you're enjoying this um, deep dive into Corel control voltages.